You can encounter people from every walk of life who will describe to you premonitions, near-death experiences, telepathy or clairvoyance at moments of acute crisis. Our existence is not just cognition, motor skill, flesh and bone. I'm Mitch and I'm a heretic because I believe the occult is a viable, practical, workable way of life. Radicals, dissidents, rebels, and misfits. You can call them whatever you like, but what if they're right? I'm Mitch Horowitz. I'm a historian of alternative spirituality, and I describe its relevance to the lives we lead today. When I was a little kid growing up in Queens, I was very interested in newspaper astrology, and I asked myself, where did all this come from? Why on earth should 21st century men and women each know their sun sign and something about it? And so I scratched my head and I began my journey. America is in some respects an occult nation. It's been a springboard, a kind of laboratory for religious novelty, religious experiment. In the mid 19th centuries, people living in very rural environs of this nation started holding what we call seances and talking to the dead. And the movement of spiritualism began literally in American log cabins. Thereafter, you started seeing seances held in the salons of Paris and the parlors and sitting rooms of London. The occult was America's first religious export. The term occult, very simply, is from the Latin occultus, meaning hidden or secret, and it was a term that Renaissance scholars used to refer to the pre-Christian spirituality of the ancient world. There was a struggle, for centuries really, between the early church and the lingering pagan or mystery-based, nature-based religions. The church prevailed throughout the Western world. And so it classified the former pagan faiths as evil or maleficent or as the excluded. There's a very, very basic core foundational principle to the American outlook that the mind is a tool of spirituality, that your thoughts to some greater or lesser degree are determinative, are an actual physical force, and that what you think about has a concrete effect on the experience of your life. Well, at its basis, that's an occult ideal. Thought is one tool in a belt of tools that we can reach for to affect actual palpable change and experiences in more than just a cognitive way, given that our culture is so profoundly divided and there seem to be such deep political and cultural chasms, it's remarkable that there's one transcendental principle that almost everyone agrees with. It was an American ideal going back more than 150 years at this point, that religion also had to be a practical agency of problem solving in the here and now. Some people take great umbrage at this philosophy while still actually participating in it. Look at the recovery movement, for example, Alcoholics Anonymous and other 12-step groups. The idea is that the individual needs to draw upon some higher power a higher power that is left specifically undefined. So you'll have lots of Americans in opinion polls today who describe themselves as spiritual but not religious. 100, 150 years ago, most people in the Western world would have no idea what you were talking about. You were a Methodist, you were a Catholic, you were a Jew, you were something. But we live in a world today where you don't have to be a something. I really believe in religious novelty. I think people should start with whatever they feel attracted to. Are you interested in reincarnation or eternal recurrence? Are you interested in ancient deities? Familiarity is not truth. Don't let people hand definitions to you, including me. Follow that magnetic thread. Who knows where a certain doorway will lead you? A lot of people follow a kind of religious novelty and they get led to extraordinary places. Spirituality or extra physicality is so deeply intimate. That, that search is, is innate to what it means to be human.
I don't think we ordered any room service, but if it looks good, you can tell them to leave it. I may have just manifested some room service. 